I'm... Whoa, we came what to is make it, a final appeal. No, I'm sorry, girls. There are no more we tickets. We just got to see what we'll find. Uh, I'm sorry. What I liked about it, and, and Carl said this so many times, uh, and Sam Denoff, we were talking, I uh, said, we never wanted to make, we never wanted to do current topics. Because as soon as you introduce current topics into it, you date yourself. And then all of a sudden, you don't want to do that, you want to be able to. However, you could still be of that era without dating yourself, and you could still do things that were very popular. When Chad and Jeremy came on, I thought it was the greatest thing in the world because here I'm a young kid. I'm like, you know, I got my old brothers. And I'm listening to rock and roll music when I'm growing up, and I'm listening to Beatles. And here comes Chad and Jeremy. I'm like, whoa, this is great. So I had a great time. Vic Damone uh, was on it, um, and and it was just really kind of fun for me because I got to play, but kind of be mixed up with my era and 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 have just a really fun time watching these guest stars come in and out, and, and it was just awesome. And Again, I think it speaks to, to the brilliance of the writing and the creation of the show where you can pull off not dating yourself but still having kind of era topics going through that are still playing today because there's still a good message in it no matter what year it is or what era it's in. It still holds up. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Petri, now, one very important thing. On this new hour format, I would like uh, very much to do some uh, topical material and also some controversial things. <laughs> do you think the world's ready for a controversial snail? <laughs> That's fair. It, it is. It, it is exactly like that. You know, you are a child, and so it's kind of one thing as a child, because you look at things obviously very differently. And so it's, it's like as a kid, Again, you're having fun, you're enjoying it, you're, you're having a good time because people are nice to you. Do you really understand the magnitude or what's kind of going on with it or even the comedy sometimes or even what it's about? Not really, you know? Um, and then you turn the clock up and you start watching it and you watch it and you realize exactly what was being presented in television, what was being written, what the shows were about, what the comedy was about. And it's like a light goes off in your head. It's like this and you're going like, Wow, that was really good, and, and I was part of that, and wow, that's just amazing. It's almost surrealistic in a lot of ways, i got to be honest with you. Well, I think what surprised me about watching it as I grew older and decided to, and, and just really understood it, was how truly funny it was and how truly uh, priceless a lot of the moments on the show were, especially the moments in the office. You know, when I was acting on the show, I only really kind of knew the scenes that I was in, even though I would watch the others, but it wasn't like I was always out there watching. I'd, I'd do my scenes and I'd go back into school or I'd go back to the dressing room and then we'd move on. We filmed it in front of the live audience at night. It was all very on backstage, so I wasn't going out and looking at them. So when I finally got to watch the office scenes um, and start listening to Maury and Deke and R Dick and Rosemary, it was such a enlightening pleasure to sit there and go, wow, no wonder everybody thinks this is one of the greatest shows ever. This is really good stuff, and this is, just, they did an episode, I'll never forget this, I was, I was watching, um, I, was, I went to UCLA, and, and we were sitting at the fraternity house one time, and I was, we were watching the Dick Van Dyke show was on, and they did an episode where um, Dick had found, a, uh, Rosemary, uh, Maury and Rosemary had found a memo from the producers saying that they were going to probably let them go, and there was another writer coming in, and and so Dick went to defend them and say no. And anyway, Paul Winchell was in it, and they ended up meeting Paul Winchell, who had the snail as the puppet. And, uh, and I watched that scene with the snail and Paul Winchell and Dick and Richard Deacon, and I couldn't stop laughing. And it was just, like, again, it was like such an enlightenment. I'm like, oh my goodness, no wonder he thinks this thing is just so wonderful. Just moments like that that you just you didn't understand when you were a kid.